Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Papers for Jeff Worth? Uh huh. I still don't see why you got to ride clean out there just for him to sign them. Can't he do it next time he comes to town? Now, these are land rights papers, Chester. Government stuff. Jake's not doing me any favor by signing them. Well, when will I expect you back, Mr. Jones? Not tomorrow evening, probably, unless Jake isn't at home when I get there. It might take longer, I don't know. I see. By the way, there's something you can do while I'm gone, if you will. Yes, sir. What's that? That door out back been off the hinges two winters now. Oh, it should be awful nice to have it fixed, wouldn't it? Well, it's, it's awful hot for that kind of work. Yeah, too doing. hot in the summer, too cold in the winter, huh? I'll fix it, Miss Jones. Good, Chester. And you might clean up our back a little, too. Those cells look like we've been boarding cattle out there, not men. Yes, sir. Well, I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye, Miss Jones. Right. Have a nice trip. Sometime I think I might maybe just go to San Francisco and get me a job being a rich millionaire gold beer. Live at a nice big hotel. Not never wash up nothing, never. <coughs> never do nothing at all except drive around in a fancy rig and have people say, Good morning, Mr. Proudfoot. Hello. Hello, Doc. And I saw Matt riding out a minute ago. Yeah, Matt Dillon. He's went. Where's he headed for? He went out into the country. Won't be back for a day or so. We left you here alone, huh? Well, now, it kind of looks that way, don't it? Must be an important mission. Well, he probably wants to travel alone, fast and light. That ain't it at all. He would have took me. But he wants me to stay here and kind of keep an eye on things. Oh, you mean he wants uh, to know how many killings took place? And how many times the bank was held up, huh? Things like that? Doc, I ain't quite as useless as you seem to think. I know, I know. I got more to do than ride around all over the country in an old buggy handing out sugar pills to defenseless old ladies or just walking up and down the plaza looking for somebody to gossip with. I don't need some old sawbones to tell me what good I am or not. The cook at Delmonico's told me they've got antelope stew today. I don't care what the... Antelope stew? I was kind of looking for someone to eat with. Are you hungry by any chance? Come on, Doc. If we don't hurry, it'll be all gone. Oh, my. Sure you don't want some more stew. Well, then, no, thank you, Doc. I just couldn't. <laughs> Can't fly on one wing, you know. Well, maybe you're right. Who uh, not just a little dab more, please? Yeah, all right, sir, sir. There you are. Thank you. Uh, Doc, you know that fellow just come in? Ah, uh, no. Well, he sure looking at you funny. I'm Bryce Harp, Judge. What? 
I said my name's Bryce Harp. You remember me. Well, no, I'm sorry, I don't. You got a convenient memory, Judge. Judge? What's this judge business? He ain't no judge, mister. It's a whole lot more likely he'd be on the other side of the bench. Sure <laughs> luck, I run into. Now, wait a minute, mister. I'm a doctor. I'm not a judge. What? A doctor, I said. Oh, he's a doctor, sure enough, mister. And if there's something wrong with your horse, he can prove... Oh, shut up, Chester. <laughs> so that's it. You're hiding out. So, now, wait a minute. Now, what in the world are you talking about? Judge Kennebrew. Big man in Wyoming. Horse doctor in Kansas. What happened, Judge? They tell you I was getting out? Uh, <clears throat> I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about, my friend. I'm talking about seven years in state prison. Seven long years you sentenced me to, Judge. Seven years to think about what I'd do when I got out. I tell you, I'm not a judge, you fool. You ask anybody, they'll tell you. Just, I'm Doc Adams. Judge, I don't care what you call yourself or what you claim to be. I've been waiting seven years to meet up with you again. And it ain't likely you nor anybody else can talk me out of killing you. Uh, killing you? Uh, That's all I've been waiting for, Judge. And I don't much care how I catch you either. Now, look here, you... You can't go around threatening people like that. Don't tell me what I can do. I've had seven years of people telling me what I can oh, do. Oh, you're crazy. You're drunk. Well, I'll see you later, Judge. I'll be doggone. Well, I've been called a lot of things in my life, but never a judge. He said he was going to kill you, Doc. Oh, it must stick me for someone else. Judge someone or other. You'll find out the truth soon enough. Oh, yeah, but he thinks you're just covering up with his doctor business. No, nah, I don't think there's too much to worry about, Chester. This Bryce Harp is just another pilgrim gone off balance with a hard life out here. He was mighty pale for a prairie man, Doc. Hey, prison power? Oh, no. Doc, no, I don't think you should ought to take this so light. Maybe seriouser than you think. No, nah, Chester, I know a thing or two about people. Harp's just a little off balance. I probably won't remember a thing about this by nightfall. Yeah. Maybe, but I ain't so oh, sure. Oh, now, look. He wasn't wearing a gun, was he? Well, no. Come to think of it, he wasn't. Well, there you are, you see. The man comes busting in here saying he's going to kill me. He's making threats, and he isn't even armed. Now, just stop threatening and eat your stew. Go ahead. Uh, okay, Doc. Yes, you know. But I don't mind telling you I sure will be easier when he leaves town. Or Mr. Dillon gets back. Why, rather? Did you see that? He said he didn't have a gun. Then just take it easy, mister. 
Get out of here. Fast. Sure. Sure, huh? I'm going. Well, I was sure wrong. That man's quite a tiger after all. Why, the way he ran Bob Forrest out of here. Well, I guess he ain't as harmless as Doc thought. That man is a real menace. Chester, how soon did you say Matt would be back? One or nine, he said. And from the looks of things, that may be too late. It sure might. Uh, Miss Kitty, you said Doc was on his way home when he come by here. Why? What are you going to do? Well, I'd better find him and... Tell him about all this. Maybe you'd better do more than that. Like what? Well, I, I don't know, but if he's really after Doc, it's no joke. Yeah, I know. Uh, look, uh, do you suppose you could keep Hart here for a while? Just keep an eye on him like... Well, I, I could give him a drink or two in the house. Yeah, you can do that. And I'll see you later. I'm going over to Doc. You got a plan? Well, not yet, but I'll think of something. <laughs> What are you doing here this time of night? Come on in, uh, Doc. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you came. I was looking over some unpaid bills. Uh, uh, Doc. Your name is pretty prompt. Never mind that now, Never Doc. mind it. Chester, you've owed me way back. Uh, Doc, you ain't gonna live long enough to collect it if you don't listen to me. Oh, all right, what are you talking about? It's Bryce Harp, Doc. I just seen him in action or at the long break. In action? Well, he didn't kill nobody, but he's got a gun and he's awful professional with it. Well, he ran Bob Forrest out of that saloon like he was a schoolboy in a pumpkin patch. He ran that bully out, huh? He sure did. And, Doc, I think he aims to come here and kill you, and ain't no two ways about oh, it. Oh, Chester, I told you the man's off balance. That's the whole trouble, Doc. If he was an ordinary man, just a plain gunman, it wouldn't be so bad, but he ain't. And right or wrong, he's got a grudge against you, and... Well, doggone it, I can't just sit by and let him come murder you. Well, now, wait, wait just a minute now, you... You really think he means business? No, I know he does, Doc. I know it sure as I'm breathing. Mm. Well, well, okay. All right. Yes. I'll start carrying a gun. Doc, how long since you fired that old wreck of a gun? Well, I'm not too sure I ever fired it. Then you just be plain foolish to start toting it now. It'll probably blow up anyway. Well, for heaven's sakes, what do you want me to do? Uh, look, uh... Doc, was you going out any horse tonight? Well, I don't generally stay cooped up in here for very long. It will you stay in tonight. Don't you budge out of Oh, here. now, look. I got an idea, Doc, and it might maybe get yes, sure. sir. I'll be back in a little bit. In the meantime, you keep that door locked tight, and don't you open it to nobody. Nobody at all, you hear? Hey, do you, you mind what I say now? No, you lock this door, Doc. I'll be back after a bit. Oh. Oh. Whatever it is, he has not mind. I, I might as well go along. Lock the door. I'll say one thing. Now that he's got the bit in his teeth, he's really running. so he wouldn't see me. What's Harp doing down the street? Waiting for his chance to kill you? Hey, you know, I've been thinking, if he was really out to kill me, he would have tried before now. Yeah, but he didn't know you was leaving town until just two minutes ago. Well, leaving town? Who? It's got to be now or never, the way he sees it. Well, what are you talking about? Look, when I left here, I went back over at the Lone Branch, and I 
Connie spread the word around that you were taking the early stage to St. Louis. St. Louis? What tarp thinks you're up here packing? Right? Oh, well, that's... Oh, fine. Yeah, that's just fine. If Harp really is serious about killing me, you set me up like a bird in a turkey shoot. Yeah, yeah I, I guess I have it done. Well, what would you want to tell him a fool thing like that for? Because I figure if he's going to try to kill you, it's better to know when and where he's going to try it. It's a lot better than just sitting around waiting for him to shoot you in the back. What are you sitting with those curtains for? So he'll know for sure you're up here and moving around. I'm just trying to make sure that I get my head blown off, aren't you? If Doc Sneed can try to shoot you from down there in the street, it'd be too easy to miss. Oh, that's a fine theory. Uh, is your front door still locked? Yeah, yes, it is. And give me the key. What? Give me the key. Oh, God, Here. Why did you unlock it? How in the world is Harp going to get in here if the door's locked? If he comes in that door, we're just as good as dead. We're right on the line of fire. Of course we are, Doc, but so is he. You better get yourself a comfortable seat. We may have us a long way. Now, wait, what are you doing? Why did you blow off that lamp? With a lamp out, you may think you've went to bed. Then we may not have such a long wait. I hope you know what you're doing, Chester. So do I, Doc. So do I. Well, I go. Oh, I guess all we can do now is just wait. Yeah. Maybe you'll recall this tuneful reminder of times past. (laughs) This is Dennis James with something else worth remembering. It's this. You're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. See, it's the normal, natural way to youthful regularity. The whole brand content of Kellogg's All Brand supplies your system with all the bulk-forming food that you need every day. There's only one All Brand. It's Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve irregularity from lack of bulk, as millions do, with a bowl full of Kellogg's All Brand each morning. A double L hyphen B R A N. It's Kellogg's. All brand. Well, for heaven's sake. Hello, Kitty. Sam. Hey, where's you? Thought you weren't coming back till tomorrow. I ran into Jake Worth at the Benson place. Saved me a day's ride. You were close for the night? Oh, yeah. But we can always find a drink for a good customer. <laughs> it helped cut the dust, all right. Beer or whiskey? Uh, a little coffee, I think. We got some. Bring it over the table, will you, Sam? You sure, Miss Kitty. Ah. Mm. Hey, you look tired. Bad day? Uh, well, as usual. <laughs> think about how rich you're getting. No, sir, I am. There you are, Marshal. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Uh, it's hot. No. Yeah. Did you stop by the office? No, I just rode in. Why? And you didn't see Chester? No. Why, is something wrong? Well, Chester's got in his mind that some fellow's going to try to kill Doc. Kill Doc? Yeah. Well, what fellow? I don't know. And he just rode into town. Well, have you seen him? Yeah, he was in here earlier this evening before we closed up. I'll say one thing. He's handy with a gun. Well, so are half the cowboys in Dodge. Well, yeah. You know, Chester, Kitty, he gets the feeling his responsibility if I'm away. He sees something suspicious in every shadow. Well, that may be, but as I get the story, this man thinks Doc is some judge up in Wyoming who put him in prison, and he's going to kill him. Well, uh, where's Chester now? I haven't seen him in a couple of hours. Kitty, this man that's after Doc, do you know his name? Harp, Chester said it was. Bryce Harp. Bryce Harp. Uh, uh, Kitty, I'll see you later. Is 
heart still down there, Chester? Yep. Just standing there. Wonder how long he's gonna Doc. What? He's coming. He's starting for the stairs. Just sit tight now and don't make a sound. No, no, Chester, are you sure? He'll be there in a minute. Well, he, he's still alive, but just barely. Help me get him up there on the table, will you? other bullet. Here. It's still there, and it's got to come out. What do you think? Well, I don't know, Chester. Too soon, you know, just how bad off he is. No. It don't give you a very good feeling to shoot a man. Even a bad man. Well, he may be all right if gangrene doesn't set him. Hey, what's happened? Oh, oh, oh so this fellow came up here Take a shot at me, Matt, and Chester put a couple of bullets in him. Well, I heard the shooting from the other end of town. It sounded like somebody was fighting the Battle of Chickamauga Creek all over again. Oh, Chester got nicked in the bargain. You all right, Chester? Yes, sir. I can tell you one thing, Matt. I'm mighty glad you got back. I, I swear I've aged the years since yesterday. Well, from the looks of things, you two got along pretty well without me. Well, it's a terrible thing, man, a man getting shot up like that. I wouldn't feel too sorry for Bryce Harp, Doc. Will you know him? If Chester hadn't stopped him, Harp might have killed you. Well, who is he, Mr. Jones? I've never seen him before, but I know his reputation. And I've seen his picture. He killed three men in a gunfight in Wyoming. He got off with ten years and broke out after seven of them. Killed two guards. Well, this not more I can do here. I think I'll go on home. Yeah, you do that. I'll go along too, Doug. Yeah, I've got work to do. You two go on. Get out of here. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, Doug. Oh, Chester. Yeah. Yeah, Doc. I want to. And I just want to. Well, oh, thanks. Sure. All right, Doc. Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted by Mr. MacDonald. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell and James Nutter. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.